Wow, thank you so much, Jazz, for speaking with me this morning. I'm so, I can't explain to you how excited I am. Um, I, I've watched your TED Talk and I watch you on Facebook. Um, and I'm actually a part of a WhatsApp group um, where the head teacher of your school um, is on there. So I feel like I've got a real connection and I just love everything you say. So I wanted to start with just saying thank you, first of all. And um, I know that there's a lot of excited leaders in our trust waiting to hear what you've got to say. And uh, I'm going to start with um, when I spoke to you last time, just to talk about whether you would do this, you had a you had a 10 percent braver T-shirt on. And today you've got a resilience ninja T-shirt on. And um, I just wanted to start off really with what why why wear those T-shirts? Because I know that they've got real meaning to you. Yeah, well, well, thank you. And it's, I know I, I kind of, I'm, it's so weird. When we went into lockdown the first time, um, I thought, right, I need a, a uniform for work because I can't just sit in my pajamas all day and there's no reason to get dressed if I'm not. So I thought, well, what would I, what do I want to wear? And obviously when I'm presenting and I'm traveling the world, I'm wearing business attire. I thought, do you know what? I want to, I just want to wear what I, what I am and what I am. I want, and I've got, I haven't got one with me, but I've got a bowl of stones in the house. And what I used to do when I was a kid, I used to take a stone from outside and keep it in my pocket when I was inside to remind me that I would be able to get outside again and I'd be okay. It was like a grounding technique. So now I take stones and I paint messages on them, words, and I have them in the house. And then we all take one in the morning or when people come and visit, I'm like, what do you need? So I've got like 10% braver, authenticity, courage, um, you know, compassion, empathy, energy, positivity on these stones and you choose them. So I do that with my stones and I thought I'd do that with my t-shirts and then wear okay. them. So, so these are all the things that people say I've said that I don't always remember saying. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got a whole line and they're actually people People keep saying where can I buy them I'm like well I, I just made them at a t-shirt shop so now I've got them on my website <laughs> people order them but it, it was really just something for me to have something to wear when when I'm working it's my rather, than, rather than your pjs <laughs> yeah which are really nice but you know a silk negligee just doesn't go down as <laughs> no, no not appropriate for all occasions but but no. I, I love it that you have those stones because I think that all of us need to hear those words sometimes, don't they? And it is just a simple case of somebody using one word just to remind you of grounding yourself um, and, and bringing yourself back into the moment. And, and I think, you know, that's that's a really important message. I, I, I love that. Um, when you, I watched your TED talk, um, you talked and you showed a clip about the moment you did the gulp the moment that you said, um, yeah, I'll, I'll be leading, I'll, I'll do that. And then you gulped. Um, and I just, I, I think that's a really important moment because I think that all of the school leaders over this last year have taken that gulp. Yeah. Um, and, um, but had to have stepped forward and been something that they haven't been before. Mm. And, um, and I'm interested in, to hear what, you know, what, what advice and, and what you've got to say in regard to that. Well, you, so my man used to have this friend, right, Ethel, who lived through the Blitz in London. And she, tell, she tells a lot of stories, but one of them she told was how she was out in London and the a, a siren went, so she went into an underground station. And when she came out, she went back home. And on the way home, some streets had been like leveled, like raised to the ground. And she said, you know, it was really disorientating because you, the place you know, you only know it because of what's there. And when that's not there, you don't know it anymore. And it's really disorientating. And like what we've gone through now, not just COVID and lockdown, but also schools showing their true colours as community yeah. hoods, pubs and hearts, not just educational establishments, so much more than that. Going through that, it means that our, the strategy we had before, the resource we had before, the map that we had when there were buildings is no longer useful because there are no buildings anymore. There's no Ofsted are gonna come and rip you a new one any minute. Where's your banner outside school? Have you done your sat? We have like, there, there's been a disordering of what was into something new. And when you go through a cultural earthquake like that, a map is not helpful. Your <laughs> strategies of leadership, what you knew before, what you did aren't helpful because the landscape has changed. What you need is a compass. A compass will show you which way north is. And I think that's what school leaders, what I've been trying to encourage school leaders and I've seen them do since the beginning is that take that compass in your hand, 
let it point to your true north and follow it. Yes, you're going to think, I don't know if this is going to work. Yes, you're going to get it wrong. Don't You don't need to worry about what if I make a mistake. There's no what if. You are going to make mistakes. <laughs> Spend your energy on working out what are you going to do when things don't go right? How are you going to, what are you going to do when you don't know what to do? And that's where we fall on reaching out, being responsible for what we're responsible for and nothing else, reframing, drawing people in and giving the right calibration of support and challenge to children, parents and to families and, and staff so that you can liberate people and not end up protecting them, trying to create certainty where there is no certainty or focusing on just you know dominating them, just get it done, get it done, get it done, where there's loads of challenge and no support. But th this is the thing, and I think the struggle has been that for a long time school leaders, one, are not, oh, just don't get me started because I'm very, very cross in general about the lack of care and concern for <laughs> leaders in school so don't get me started but there's there's no um acknowledgement there's no um support there's no there's no one fighting for their highest good everything they get trashed in the media they get moaned at by the government gavin i'll see you in court williamson as a, his latest thing that he's doing and don't get me wrong that being education secretary it's got to be the most hideous job in the world not one that i would ever be able to do and i think you, you in some ways you're damned if you do damned if you don't but what is needed is human first leadership that says we trust you we, we are standing with you. We, you know, you are, this is your school. Go lead. Don't lead in fear. Don't lead in, but what will off say saying, what was it? Lead, lead from the heart, lead from your community, lead from the DNA that is your school. Because right now that's what's needed. And yeah. the best one in the world, no, you know, you're, you're on the front line. No one else yeah. can be there. So, so I think it's this thing of don't, we're worried because we're worried that we had a, a kind of rules of engagement before, which we don't have anymore. Well, one, you know, the rules of engagement we had before were quite exhausting and stealing our best life away from us. And, and there is freedom now. Yes, there's also lots of responsibility and chaos. But two, this is the time to, to do what, what, you, what you've wanted to do in order to show up and fight for the highest good of every person connected with your school. And I think this is the time where there's no... The, 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 all the stuff around imposter syndrome and the stuff that school leaders have been trained in feeling inadequate not good enough you know just in themselves as humans this is a time when we can reframe that and readdress that because look at what you've done and i think that's the thing that's the thing carla people spend we're always having to vision we're always having to be reactive and look forward into something that we don't know how it's going to be and right now the the thing i'd love school leaders to do is to look up get your head off the day to day because that's always going to suck you in look up and then look back just take a minute to look at where March 23rd 2020 and now look at what you've done what you've achieved not just survived not just thrived you've dr you've I was gonna say drived driven change you've actually gone past surviving past thriving gone Absolutely. on to driving change. it's you know and look and then look forward look yeah. up look back and then look forward but it's not a case of you know it's it's so um it's so refreshing to hear somebody say that because um if you think back to um what schools have done since last march we've totally changed the way that we've worked yeah. to be able to access a really good quality remote learning package to our children out there and still continue that connection and and you know adapt adapt you know a key word i've been saying to leadership teams that i'm working with at the moment is look at the adaption that have, have, that have been made and you know we can't forget that and we can't lose sight of that but you mentioned there and i was gonna um i watched you on facebook a couple of weeks ago and you said kids out there need a hero and we've got to turn down the volume on fear which i absolutely love that phrase turn down the volume of fear and it's really relevant because, you know, as school leaders, like you said, we've had an agenda, we've had a, an offset framework, we've had a criteria, we've got to always be visioning, we've got to look at what's happening, that blue sky thinking. And there's a real moment now to pause, isn't there? There's a real moment to be present and to think about what we're doing and what's really important to us. And I wanted to... I wanted to ask your opinion, really. What do you really think is important for teachers right now? And, and, and you know, what have we got to be thinking about for the future as well for our children from your perspective? Oh, gosh. Well, I, I always said I'm not I'm not suggesting we have a revolution, but I always was. And I still am that there's something around. We've had like an industrial revolution. Everything changed. Then we had a technological revolution and everything changed. Then we had a digital revolution and everything changed. And it's 
it's time for a human revolution. I, that, I can't help but feel that because the, the thing about turning the volume down on fear is because our um, amygdala is constantly trying to protect us, right, in our brain, the whole fight and flight thing. So it's also trying to close a story loop, trying to make sense of stuff. So if something, if we struggle with something or if something goes wrong, our amygdala that just wants to stop burning up calories, trying to work out what it is and wants to move on, will go, it's probably your fault. It's probably because you're not good enough. It's probably you. And then you go, oh God, it's my fault, it's my fault. So you can close that story loop and move on to the next one. But what happens when you've got this series of story loops where it's me, I'm not good enough, it's my fault, it's my, yeah. you start living and leading in fear. And at that stage, <laughs> you're just like, you're not multiplying anything. You're literally taking away, you're minusing from your team because you're, you, you, haven't, you haven't filled yourself up in the way you need to be in order to encourage others. So there's something around turning the volume down on fear because I talk about who's driving your bus. And like in my past, I can see very much that fear has at times been driving my bus. And fear driving a two-ton double-decker bus is a bit like an eight-year-old driving. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or going to crash. It's not Mario Kart. It's worse than Mario Kart. So, so and, and I think about, you know, I was playing Mario with my son and I'm, I'm rubbish at it and he's really good at it because I'm a terrible parent and he's on it for 24 hours a day. Um, <laughs> so, so I was playing it and I was like, as I'm crashing, I'm tensing even more. And as I'm tensing, I'm making it worse. And it gets to the point where I'm like, this is not fun you know, but I've got to finish the race for some reason. <laughs> so it just becomes this, you're not performing to your best. You're not able to yeah. do what you can. And for a long time, I've tried to encourage um, the importance of acknowledging and celebration, celebrating achievements, even if it's, oh, I failed and I've realized I failed. Mm. So, and, and especially to leaders, because what they tend to do is even if you get like an outstanding offset, they're like, great. Okay. What's next? I'm like, yeah. oh my gosh, yeah. take a freaking breath. Because, And here's why, not just because um, your impact is directly related to your the way you take care of yourself. And if you don't acknowledge and recognize and take a pause and go, yeah, it's not bragging if it's true. I did that. And stop going, it's a team effort. Yeah, I know. And you're the leader and you get paid more because it's inconvenient to lead and you have had an impact. So own it. Yeah. If you can do that, your impact, the change you're seeking to achieve is bigger and stronger and more powerful. But if you cannot acknowledge your own role, your own wins, if you can't celebrate the things that you do, then, then that that's taking time and taking energy and taking kind of impact away from what you're actually trying to achieve secondly it's also setting a really bad example to teachers if you're like working every night sending in emails at half 12 at night because you're up working and we all do it yeah. but there's a, even if you say you don't need to answer you're their boss of course they're gonna you know i do it if you sent me an email and i you are my boss i'd be like because oh, i want to do my best so i think at the minute it's there's four things that um that people who are led need and leaders are also led, but, you know, their, their bosses are different people. And it's it's trust, hope, stability and compassion. They drive out fear. Yeah, trust, yeah. hope, stability and compassion. You cannot be afraid and be all of those at the same time. And so it's finding a way of how do people, how can we exude trust? And I think that's part of my problem with school leaders is it feels like they're not trusted. And, and you know, yeah. that undermines, you can see the, the, the school leaders' bosses if there's a feeling of not being trusted that undermines that relationship and that loyalty and that ability to thrive um compassion is like kind of going through quite a bit here people have got relatives that they're losing they're looking after kids they're anxious about their own safety i mean we just it's not about sympathy it's about standing with people it's not about doing things for people or to them it's a witness that's yeah. what we need to do as leaders and also what we deserve as leaders that we're not getting. I'm not ignoring that fact. I'm just saying this is what we're going to do. And um, stability is hard when there is no um, certainty and stability. But there is always a way that we can say, you know what, me and my people, me and my home, me and my family, me and my team, we're going to do this. And, and this is what we're going to do. And there's something around giving people that stability mm. and hope. I mean, I'm a great one for expecting over hoping, but it, not 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 hope that's rooted in the past like oh when we go i can't wait till we go back to normal all right newsflash we're not going back to normal right we're not going back anywhere and normal is relative what we are doing is going forward to something new and different where we get to live a life based around our values a life on our terms our life your life your rules your values this is the opportunity don't waste it by thinking about won't it be good when we can go to nando's again because that that's <laughs> we're not looking here and also why do you want to recreate i've seen a lot of schools that say we're going to recreate and rebuild why do you want to rebuild a life that nearly killed you in the first place you never saw your kids your partner hated your job and you were miserable all the time <laughs> what do you want to 
take that for? No, this, no. You know, and I know change is hard. Change is always hard. But that's the notion. That's school leaders in a nutshell. We want things to be better, but we also want things to stop changing every time. It is. Yeah. We've got to find a balance. And and I would say it's that you can. I, this is it's ridiculous. When I had my kids, I started watching Caesar Romano, Dog Whisperer. He's a guy who trains dog <laughs> because because I thought it's got to be similar, hasn't it? Training a dog, having a baby, it's coming. This was how clueless I was. But one thing he said was that when you're talking to your dog, when you tell your dog to sit, don't go sit, Basil. Come on, Basil. Come on, Basil. Sit. Stand. Channel someone that you feel has um, power. So I channeled Cleopatra, and if you stand there and channel Cleopatra and then go sit. There's, a, there's an authority that is full of trust, hope, stability, and passion. And blow me, it works on dogs. I try it all the time with dogs that I meet. Oh my God. I'm going to channel. I'm going to ch channel. Yeah. <laughs> and it works on kids because it grounds you. It has no impact on the animal or the person, but it grounds you. So leaders need to channel someone who is not living in fear and then channel that person when they're speaking to people because there, there is a need for human first leadership and leaders aren't getting it, but that does not mean that they can't give it. Yeah. You you mentioned um, in your TED talk uh, and you've got it on your T-shirt today, resilience. And you and you said you've got a passion for resilience. And two two things that you said in that TED talk, really, it hit me very hard. You said school meant everything to me. And you said and when you talked about the teacher that, that actually noticed you, you said he stood for me. Yeah. Um, and, and that for me, um, just it hit hit in the gut completely. The the emotive response I had from that, you know, was 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 huge. Your journey really, for me, personifies education in the fact that um, when we went into lockdown last year, I think it became really obvious that we were not just education yeah. institutions. And the the power that we had within a school was far greater than than that. And we're not a nine till three profession, taking 12 weeks off uh, a year. <laughs> but still, we seem to have the media coverage around that and, and not recognise that. And, and I'd just be interested to sort of like, like your firework, really, we're saying like, do you think we work nine till three? <laughs> oh, Lord, baby girl. <laughs> that's, that's the firework you might regret like. <laughs> do you know what? There's something around... Um, let me say this and be really clear with this. Educators will always be a target for media because you're yeah. such an easy target. Like you will show up and put others first day after day after day. You will take so much bull poo that it will be like on top of you and you will still seek to serve. I mean, you're like, you know, NHS and social care and, and then you get paid rubbish money for doing it and you, you will take that. You are such an easy target. It is always going to happen. Yeah. And your 2020 story is the one that you write, not the one that other people write. It's your story. The pen's in your hand. And one of the things that I envisage at the minute, it will be good. And where we're moving to and part of the revolution is that um, there's a simple answer to the media kind of stirring up and government kind of not really standing with you. There's no withness from, you know, there's, there's kind of a lot of, it feels it's not even for, it's against. It's not even doing stuff to schools, which it used to be. It's, it's kind of feels like against in a way. Yeah. And I, I don't want to sugarcoat it. You know, there is that. But there's one thing at the minute that if schools and parents and the government were all on the same team in the premiership instead of three different teams, we'd be winning every match. Okay. And I think in the first instance, schools are the ones that can make this change. And there's something around the narrative around parents, because there's been this narrative in the past where schools provide free childcare, yeah? And parents deliver their kids to school and get told off for not having the right uniform, for getting sandwiches and giving chocolate when they shouldn't. That, that's how it works. And you haven't read the book either. So there's this, <laughs> and what's wrong with that is there are a lot of parents who had a terrible school experience themselves yeah. and are now having to relive it with their own kids. There's no sense of, um, we are with each other, not even for. <clears throat> and I talk about this a lot. You know, the, the government does things to schools. Schools do things for parents and for children. And, and there's a withness missing. If we were looking at doing things with parents, with, I think schools do things with children, but with parents, that you'd have an army of loyal people on your side. And that was shown by, you know, complain to Ofsted if your school's not doing well and people Ofsted being flooded with praise for schools. But at the minute, I think parents have actually reframed their idea around what school looks like because smart parents realise that school is fighting for their highest good that they are actually standing alongside parents and going, what, what do we need to do? That yes, they're coming at it from a different angle, but when, when it was just about education, it was almost like it's academia first and then 
human yeah. second and that's been turned on its head and that is something that if schools and parents are together that's a huge number of electorate and votes that the government then suddenly gets involved in because it, you have to if you're in politics you have to go where the vote it the numbers are where the interest yeah, is. yeah. so I, I really feel there's something around um resilience doesn't mean stiff upper lip it doesn't mean being british and going blah 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 don't mention the war it's not that resilience is creating a life that you don't want to regularly escape from resilience is being able to stand with people and say we're not here with pitchforks but i'll tell you something this far and no further we we don't know if this is going to work we don't know if anyone's done it before we are feeling scared but this is where bravery comes in courage is what firefighters courage is like something that's trained and embedded you you turn up at the, the fire you run towards the building that that's not me i don't do that bravery is where you're terrified but you still take the next step because your why your cause is greater is is what matters most that's your hashtag what matters most is why we're doing what we're doing and and i think parents and schools have got that at heart and i think and also to be fair schools have not made it easy for parents to stand with them yeah because no, it, no. Like, there's no you know the first time you contact them usually is when something's gone wrong yeah it's like, look, your parents need to know you're for them right because they are for you because you've got the most important and precious thing in their lives in your building or, or in your care six hours a day so i i do everything to champion my schools and parents so that when something goes wrong because it will we can talk about it as as colleagues friends on a level rather than this status thing we need to get rid of the status thing yeah so schools yeah. need to be able to like invite parents in and say hey listen we're for you we care about about you also we have a real standard of care here that we will do and we will uphold that for you for your children for everyone who, who is part of this community we will you can trust us to do that we will do that and that means that if 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 things go wrong we will you know we'll look at it it's not giving parents you know go and run the school and moan at us but there's too much parents ringing up and complaining and they're not complaining they're scared they're feeling like do you care do you care about my kid do you genuinely do you care yeah. that's what they're scared of and if schools were able to take that narrative and go let me tell you how much we care. We get rid of the Ofsted banner that says our Ofsted says our school is good. We tick a few boxes and we put one out there saying every child in this school, we will fight for their highest school because we are completely positively connected and passionately for enforcing their future. We will unlock the potential of everyone. Everyone in this building is valued. You are part of our community. We are with you. I mean, that, that's the truth about schools. That's the stuff they need to stand on because parents feel that and get absolutely behind. and you know what it, that's just really hit a nail for me because i think that up until march last year schools were very very conscious of of that mark that ofsted framework and what we were we being told was our achievement goal yeah. and then that got thrown completely out of the window in march last year and what became really obvious for a lot of schools, um, and I'm sure a large percentage of schools, was the connection that we needed to make sure we maintained with our homes. The connection and that social emotional agenda that became sort of more important than anything else as well. You know, we could do the phonics lessons, we could do the reading and writing lessons, but making sure that our children still felt they had that connection with us and that relationship with us. And for me, um, from, from a school leader perspective, that, that moved forward significantly. And I think you're absolutely right, is that what we need to make sure is we hold on to that. Um, and we don't, like you've just said previously, go back to the old of like, there's the Ofsted framework and that's what we've got to tick the box for. But it's that real connection that we have with our homes and our communities and making sure that they know that, like you've just said as well, that we're with them. Um, mm -hmm. And I think there has been um, for school leaders, sometimes that necessity to, to have that authority in a sense, yeah, yeah, yeah. but but you're right, it's that with them. And so, as you know, you're, you, you've been a governor, you, you're a treat teacher, you, you're a parent. What does that with you actually look like mm -hmm. then? Yeah. And, and what do what do we do to get it? So yeah, oh, this is beautiful. So I'm, I'm a governor now of an amazing school. I, I just love this school so much. Um, I, and the staff there and the leaders there, and they, they've gone through it, you know, <laughs> they've gone through it. And one of the things, especially like we had lockdown, we had Joyce Floyd, we had, you know, bias talks and lots was coming up in school. And, and, uh, and the head reached out to me and we had some, we've had some really courageous conversations. And one of the things I said to him is I talked about seeing 
um, after George Floyd was murdered, there was um, a, a white police officer with all his police were white in Je Jevesy or Genesee in America. And there was a Black Lives Matter protest full of brown people. There's only about 40 of them, but they're all there with the kids and their dogs and their, you know, push chairs and whatever. And they're having this protest and the, the police have been called. So he turns up, uh, police chief, and he, he's, the police are surrounding like big, strong, muscly guns, police surrounding these like brown people having a protest. So the police officer goes into the center of the guy and he goes, right. All right, let's sort it. We are with you, right? We we want what you want, right? We are all here with you. So we're going to turn this protest into a parade. We're, we're with you. See every officer around here? See all these? They are all for you and they're all with you. They love you. See that guy there? He hugs people. I don't, he doesn't even need to, but he does. So we're all with you. I've told them all to put the guns down. We're with you. What do you need? How do we be with you? What do we do? And Oh, it's just beautiful. I put the video on Facebook actually, Carlos. Yes, yesterday I posted the video because I found okay. it. Okay. And there's this voice, like there's a couple of people that just start saying, "Walk with us, walk with us," and then the the crowd start chanting, "Walk with us," and the police officer says, "Let's do it," and then these white police officers and these brown protesters, and the children, the dogs, all walk together. And I, I, I am undone. That's what witness looks like. Some yeah. schools do things to their children, to their families, to some leaders do things to their teams. Some do things for, and for is powerful. As long as other people know you're for them. You, I could do something for you, but if you suspect that I've got an agenda, it's not really having the impact it deserves. Mm -hmm. But some do with, and the greatest of these is with. With requires authenticity and vulnerability. And schools are historically not good at vulnerability because look what happens if you make yourself vulnerable, you get sacked. So, <laughs> so, uh, so the vulnerability edge is a big ask. It's a big ask. But here's the thing. If you are doing that, Ofsted boxes get ticked anyway, and you go above and beyond. Because it's not like... Um, social emotional whatever we want to call it it's you you can't teach the bus stop method to long division to someone who hasn't had a biscuit you you can't enroll people who are hungry you know when we when march first hit and people are like the first conversations i was in the hairdressers right having me barnet done and the first <laughs> conversations were how are we gonna do homeschooling how are we gonna and i was like can we stop a minute there are kids that will not be eating on friday yeah because they relied on school for meals now, if all you're going to do is turn up on Monday with a pack of paper and say, right, this is what we do. Not, it, not, you can do something to make it better. You can do something to make it worse. You can do nothing at all. That's actively making it worse. Because it's like saying, you not being able to eat is your business. Get the work done. You're not saying that, but it's like saying that. You've got to see how it feels, what it's like on the other side of you. And that's what I want parents to think about. What's it like on the other side of you having to go at schools when things go wrong, being scared? What's it like for schools? What's it like on the other side of you? If you're constantly issuing missives, 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 because you're, you're reeling and not knowing what to do. Stop for a minute. Being witness is about being human. And the, the letters I've had with, with I shared this with um, the head of one of our schools, uh, one of the schools I'm governor at. And, um, and I said, it's your letters. It's the tone of your letters where you start with witness. Because you write a letter to parents that sounds like, we're doing this and you're gonna do it. It's like, I'm not, I'm not in your class, right? I don't have to, I'm not, I am, I am gifting you my support. It, but you, it may, it's like when, you know those posters when you're at a train station or when you're in a shop and it yeah. says, our, deserve, our staff deserve the right to win. If you punch anyone, we will take you to court. And I was like, oh my God, I wasn't going to punch <laughs> anyone, but I think I might now. Whereas you could have a sign that says, Thank you for treating our staff with respect. They are so for you and with you. We want to be, we want to do everything we can. So yeah. thank you for treating the respect that that makes me want to buy flowers for the woman behind the ticket desk. Yeah. So the words we use have a huge impact on the reaction we get. And the words we use again, driven by kind of our own, like, oh, you know, it's like I don't go on social media if I'm in a bad mood or I'm tired. I don't use, can't, don't, won't. I now and again I slip up, but I try and be, I don't write emails if I'm feeling angry. Because I, what I want to do is what's it feel? Feel like on the other side of me to receive yeah. this what reaction do I want so if I can work out how I want people to be then I can act accordingly and I think there's something around um this whole working nine to three thing that we keeps coming up and this whole thing around witness it, you need to be a bit more honest about how much you love those kids you need to be a bit more honest about how much of your life you have sacrificed for your school. And I'm not saying you go in and go, I'm alcoholic, I smoke 20 a day and I think I got involved in some human trafficking in my accident on the way to school this morning. Year one, don't need to know that, let alone their parents. But I am saying you do need to start talking to them without the fear of having to be right all the time. Yeah. And that it's, it's so powerful because when someone does this 
with you when someone exhibits with like there, there was a school they were talking about what before all this and one of the heads was talking about one of the parents who you know just comes in effing and jeffing chucks a kid in late blah blah and the head was saying it's a nightmare i said yeah it must be awful does she know you're for her and the head said well i actually know she's supposed to come to meetings i'm like yeah i know that but does she know you're for her yeah. and they said well she knows she's not supposed to share, swear in the reception i said yeah but does she know you're for her because if she doesn't know you're for her why would she be anything different why would she yeah. be loyal to you she, she doesn't know you're for her she can't trust you so no, nothing is going to change like when it snows and there's no there's no travel and stuff or you close the school so if it was mate you send a text are you all right and what i would do when i if i was running a school when it snowed i'd be like right everyone who can and isn't stressed here's all the phone numbers of everyone in our school we're going to ring everyone and go how are you doing i'm just going to be on the phones all day anyone who could do it come join me imagine that imagine getting a call from school that just said we just want to check you're all right we've got some breakfast cereal here if you need anything i'll, I'll yeah. be there if you want to let me know i'll deliver it imagine that and and yeah. that's that's the witness I'm talking about. I'm not talking yeah. about doing anything other than small acts of kindness. And that's, I think that's what ma massively changed at the point of lockdown last year is that, um, like, as an in, for, for, from our school perspective, I started to do videos um, yes. because I thought, right, I'll connect, I'll get my face out there. Um, and uh, one of the parents emailed in and said, can I ask, do you... Um, Mrs. Whelan, do you do the Twitter for the Oak Meadow? Because um, it feels like it comes from you. And I said, yeah, I, I, I do. I pop on Twitter and I do all of that business and da 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 And she went, do you know, it really means a lot that you do that because we feel it's from you, it's from the school, it's from the heart. Mm. And the videos that you send out, um, it, 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 we, we see how much you care. And, and you know, that what you've just said there is uh, just really honed into me a year ago and like because you sometimes think that like parents don't really want to see you so much you're not that important to them you, you, you know you're not I haven't got a sense of of, of self-importance like that you know so why would they want to see me why would they want to do but they actually do and yeah. I think yeah. it goes back to what you said earlier about um we don't um we don't praise ourselves enough and we don't sometimes um give ourselves enough credit and we so therefore think that our parents don't really want to hear from us. They don't really want to see us. That's not important to them. But actually, we missed a massive trick there because it is. It's yeah. really important. That connection, seeing your face, getting in contact with you, being able to get in contact with you. And, and that dialogue and that conversation. And I loved what you just said there about it being a conversation on a level not a conversation of like, I'm being told off in Mrs. Whelan's office, but a conversation on a level of like, look, tell me, tell me why you're not liking what the school's done. And then what I'll do is I'll try and explain to you why we did yes. that. Yeah. And then yeah. between us, we can perhaps try and find a way forward that, that moves us both forward positively. And, and doing, doing a school, so one of the schools that one of my children was at, they just sent out a survey saying, okay, remote learning, what do you think? Everyone filled stuff in. And then what they did is they said, okay, here, Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Here's what you said um, that you're struggling. And then they put comments like, I'm finding the live lessons really hard work because it's blah, blah. And underneath, I love the live lessons. It's absolutely brilliant. And then their response. We know that different people find it difficult for different reasons. And we're doing a mixture of this. That's why we're going to you know, try and do a mixture of both. But it's showing. It's like, guys, it's not, we're not, it's not just you we're trying to fit around. We fit around everyone. But it's doing it with care and compassion. Yeah. Then underneath, they put all of that. And then underneath, they put all the positive things people have said. And it rolled out. I'm in a WhatsApp group right for parents and that whatsapp group at times has been quite um <laughs> well you know wah, wah, are you there? And, and i'm there as a calming influence to go by the way remember this i remember this anyway so i've been working on this group for a while they're lovely people but obviously everybody's trying to do the best by their kid and doesn't understand the world of education because they haven't done the degree and had the experience Anyway, so we've had conversations I've been sort of talking about with and saying this and saying that and, and leading conversations and being a leader within that. Like, who am I? I'm just another parent. I, I'm not associated in any way with that school apart from being a parent. But I have adopted a leadership mindset in just saying, let's think about this and let's do this and here's how. And what's happened is slowly people have started to do the same. You know what happened last week? They raised 400 pounds to buy pizzas for school. Oh, wow. this, is, this is a group that was set up to moan. This is a group that was set up to moan. <laughs> 400 pounds they were trying to get like 90 quid to buy pizzas for the staff there's only six of them there god knows what they're gonna do with all pizzas but they were 400 quid from from the group asking for for that was one year group one year group because the conversation has changed from two to four yeah and, that's and I, I mean, here's just one, one thing carla 
for, ad, for, the, for the educators, the school leaders, the teachers who've done video, massive kudos. I know how much you hate being in front of a camera. I know <laughs> it's not natural to you. Me, I was born to be a TV presenter. I need my own show. But I know, I know how hard it is. But I've got to say, that's the essence of this leadership because the essence of leadership is it's not about you and it's all about you. And the not about you bit is the reason we don't make videos before March is because we might look stupid. Why do they want to hear from us anyway? I don't like the sound of my voice on video. I'm a bit fat, my hair's a mess. It's all about us. And what if, what if, what if the benefit, what if what mattered most was the fact that parents hearing from you were able to go, do you know what? She put that message out and she looked really uncomfortable and funny. And there was a cat in the background that kept licking its <laughs> vegetables. But she did that. She did it. And I wouldn't be brave enough to do that. And she did it. And that must mean something. Yeah. So what if it isn't about, and that's what I want to encourage people to do. What if it's not about you in this instant? What if it's about the impact you have on others, which then gives you so much ground and so much support and so much loyalty, you suddenly have a firmer place to stand. So it's almost going down to come up. This is what I'd also like to say to the DFE, by the way, I would love to see them doing it too. But the fact that we don't have human first strong leadership is not an excuse for not giving that. And when you're a leader, you're a leader to staff and school and children and parents. You, you represent them. You've got to show up. You, you've got to show up. So don't, don't, be, don't be afraid. In fact, do you know what? Get it wrong. Get, have, do a video. But the head who does, I've been saying to him for years, should get on video. And he's like, well, blah, blah, blah. And he's always making videos of the kids and the team. So he's finally started doing it. And his first one, no word of a lie, is like this. In a suit, in his garden. And he's like that. So thank you for coming to... <laughs> I went, Tony, you, you've nailed it. You've nailed it. You've done it. Because actually that nervousness is something yeah. that parents go, oh my gosh, he doesn't even love it. And he's still done it. And that's for us. Yeah. You know, yeah. I feel like I love school because school loved me first as a kid. And I love the schools now because they love my kids and they stand with me. It is impossible for me not to stand with them. And what I'm really taking away from this, Jazz, and I thank you for, is that um, that sense of it's okay for that vulnerability. Because yeah. I think as a leader, I ha will openly confess, you know, there's been moments and there's still moments where I feel I've got to put that swan face on and go, no, no, I'm handling this and I'm fine with that and I can do this. And and actually, I said to, to the SLT here at Oak Meadow last week, um, right, I want you to stop swanning it for a bit. <laughs> I, I know that I've sent you that message for years and years and years, actually. But yeah. this week, I want you to stop swanning it because what we need to do is we need to understand each other's vulnerabilities to be able to then support each other with those. Yeah. And, um, and and that for me is, is a real big thing that I've learned over the last couple of months. And I thank you for saying that because, you know, um, it is about us not being afraid to show those vulnerabilities. And, you know, that's the message I think that, you know, I'm going to take back to the trust and I'm going to keep saying to the people that I work with so is that we can make sure that we don't go back, like you said, um, that we, we, we forward to the future and we, we vision that out, but with a real sense of energy and yeah. excitement because this is a real opportunity, isn't it? So it's obviously and it's hard. And I've, ju I've just sent you a link as well. Feel free to share this when it comes to being aware of not just our vulnerabilities and insecurities or tendencies, but everybody so that we can human hack each other and work better to get we're better together. So yeah. we can work as a team and that that will really help school leaders. I would advise you to do it yourself. Also do it with your partner, but get your team to do it because it just gives you a, a way of communicating that meets people where they are rather than where you need them to be or want them to be. It's yeah. just vulnerability doesn't mean saying you're not good at stuff or crying and drinking gin. That's not vulnerability. That, you need help at that point. <laughs> vulnerability is going, if you, need, if you need help, you make a request. And if you don't need help, you offer. That's what vulnerability looks like. Rather yeah. than going, right, am I all right? Am I doing it? I'm doing it. It's okay. That's, not, that's, that's still fear. So it's, it's a case of like turning the volume down on fear. That, that, will, that will cause everything else to rise up. Yeah. And, and just to, to, to work Meadow in particular, above and beyond, right? You have gone above and beyond. This is not in your job description. You don't get paid any more for this. You don't get recognized. You very often get a kick in the face. <laughs> and yet you stood and you continue to stand. And I've got to tell you that that legacy is going to be part of not just your, your community and family, but those children those children who will tell this story, the 2020, 2021 story, they will tell the time when the world stopped and central to that story will be who you were, who you showed up as, not even what you did, but who you were, who you are, 
your, your willingness to be, that will be central to their story. So know that even though you might not get a medal in this instance, although if I was making the medals, you'd have a big fat one. <laughs> what you've invested in and what you've done is, is far beyond what you could have done in the old world. So thank, thank you, you. For, for continually going above and beyond and, and always meeting people where they are. Thank you, Jazz. And thank you for, for giving this message to, to Marches. Um, you know, the work that all of our schools have done within our trust has just been outstanding to me. I'm in awe of all of our leaders and I'm in awe of all of the leaders across the country. Um, but to hear people like yourself who are prepared to put their voice out there for us and prepared to say the things that you're saying and be our champion um, means the absolute world. So thank you for doing that. And thank you for talking to me this morning.